What's up guys, happy new year. Hope you all enjoyed the fireworks. And for our first patron pick of 2018, we've got a Pokemon that can literally withstand fireworks. Or even bombs really, according to his Pokedex entry. That's right, it's the virtually indestructible Cloyster. Patrons, I don't know if this is a Christmas gift or something, but thanks for a respite from the absolutely monstrous picks you were giving me before. It's said that no one has ever seen what's inside Cloyster's shell. Well, newsflash everyone, it's just f***ing ghastly. I mean, look at it. You can clearly see it's a little black ball just laughing at us. Makes how hard it is to kill it even more frustrating. But is Cloyster's smile earned, or are we about to see it get wiped off its face? For the first time of the new year, how good was Cloyster actually? And in this video, we'll be covering these competitive formats. Holy moly, look at that defense set. Okay, maybe now I get why you have that big grin, Cloyster. For those keeping track, that's the second highest stat in any category in Gen 1, period. Only lower than Chansey's 250 HP. 85 special, 95 attack aren't too shabby either. Honestly, all of Cloyster's stats are pretty good except for its low HP. Cloyster's move pool isn't great either, but his evolutionary line did happen to be the only Pokemon in the game with access to Clamp. And in Gen 1, oh boy, is Clamp brutal. Moves like Clamp and Rap prevented the enemy from moving whatsoever, and while Clamp did have a lower accuracy, meaning it didn't have quite the sadistic trapping power of Rat, it also packed 20 base power and a special designation. Although Cloyster's speed wasn't incredible, it cleaned up paralyzed Pokemon incredibly well, making it a very effective late game Pokemon after your team had body slammed or thunder waved the other team. And on top of that, Cloyster had Stab Blizzard, which was always wonderful in Gen 1. After slowly squeezing the life out of his enemies, Cloyster could fire off a devastating Blizzard to KO the enemy, or if necessary, even a hype Beam against Pokemon with high special, or if really, really necessary, Cloyster could become the firework itself and explode on an unsuspecting Tauros or Starmie, removing them from the game. With that nice spread of moves, Cloyster was a good choice as a late game cleaner, and was possibly one of the best answers to the strong normal types like Tauros or Snorlax, though Cloyster had quite a few Pokemon that could threaten it, namely things that bypassed its huge defense and hit it on the special side. Slowbro resisted everything and attacked the mine with Psychic, if it carried Psychic, while Venusaur and Victory Bell could target weak spots with a near guaranteed critical hit Razor Leaf if they avoided getting Blizzard. The best counters were Thunderbolt users though, either faster electric types like Jolteon or water types like Starmie and Lapras who resisted all of Cloyster's moves, and once again especially if they crit. But really having Explosion as a last ditch effort meant barely anything could truly be safe against Cloyster, and in turn it threatened everything, being a top ranked physical tank and cleaner in overuse, and a solid B tier in Nintendo Cup. While Cloyster's defense was a nice support to its role as a cleaner in Gen 1, it ended up being even more important in Gen 2. You thought Clamp was a nice move to have? Try Spikes on for size. As a defense monster who could also threaten offensively with good speed and its powerful explosion, Cloyster was arguably the best spike setter in the game. Its main competition was in Fortress, who boasted a bevy of resistances thanks to its steel typing and the threatening hidden power bug. While Starmie preyed on Cloyster and spun away its hazards easily, Fortress was a tricky opponent to deal with. In addition, Cloyster suffered heavily from the special split, losing a whole 40 points in special defense, and since binding moves got nerfed, Clamp was pretty much trash now. All that said, Cloyster's ability to pivot between defense and offense on a whim, or even run defensive sets itself focusing on Rapid Spin and Toxic, meant it was one of the best Pokemon in all of Gen 2. Sure, it had to rely on Surf and Ice Beam since Blizzard was nerfed, but that was a pretty powerful stab combination shored up by Explosion for the kicker, if necessary. And when paired with Pokemon that force switches like Steelix or Raikou, it was continually laying down hurt purely through the spike support. As Cloyster's use revolved around spikes, spinners made its life hell, but good spinners were a pretty small category with Starmie, Fortress, and Cloyster. Cloyster couldn't prevent any of these Pokemon from spinning, but it could at least chunk out Fortress with Surf, winning the head-to-head -head matchup. Past the obvious move counter, Cloyster struggled with strong special attackers, especially electric types. Unfortunately for Cloyster, that meant that Raikou and Zapdos, two of the best Pokemon in the game, were frequently around to ruin its day. Spin blockers like Gengar and Mischievous could live through a Surf and then hit it with their own electric type moves, or Parish Song. Phasing through Rapid Spin and Explosion, forcing Cloyster to switch, unless they mean looked it, in which case Cloyster was just straight up screwed. However, straight up tanks or walls like Blissey lost to Cloyster, as it could go off and explode at any moment or use its setup moves. All in all, Cloyster defined a good part of the GSC metagame, and found itself at the top of overuse, and is easily one of the top 5 Pokemon in Nintendo Cup, where Raikou and Zapdos were less prevalent. First things first, Cloyster's ability Shell Armor made it an even more consistent tank by preventing critical hits completely. Honestly, Cloyster stayed pretty much exactly the same, leaning into its niche as a dual spike setter and spinner. Now, 
Now, it couldn't quite keep up offensively anymore with the absurdly strong Pokemon like Salamence, but luckily for Cloyster, it matched up incredibly well against most of the metagame and was still very good at its job, threatening Salamence, Metagross, Flygon, and Gyarados. Though its main set was exactly what you would expect. Spikes, Rapid Spin, a Stab Move, and then Explosion. It could also potentially run Rest or Toxic to stall out opposing bulky water types. Really though, Cloyster just stuck to its guns and grinned the whole way through. As Cloyster didn't change that much, you can expect that its counters didn't either, and you're right. Starmie, Raikou, and Zapdos were all still its best counters, and new additions followed the archetype of strong special attackers, namely Celebi and Jirachi. Gengar could also come in on Rapid Spin and threaten it with Thunderbolt, and even Suicune could set up on Cloyster. But that was just as more sets developed. Overall, the metagame was kind to Cloyster, and it stayed solidly in overuse as one of the best spikers. Not quite as dominant as in Gen 2, but still very strong. But bad news for Cloyster, all that defense doesn't mean jack in a world of stealth rocks. This pretty much ruined Cloyster's utility as a spinner itself, leaving it even more pigeonholed as a spike setter. Additionally, Cloyster couldn't come in multiple times during the game unless rocks were removed, but it didn't justify the investment that was spinning just to get in, especially with its explosion completely harmless against ghost types. That said, Cloyster managed to find a new life for itself in the lead-centric metagame of Gen 4. It wasn't quite worth using unless your team really needed spike supports from the word go, but it was 100% the best lead spiker Pokemon, bar Rose Raid. With specific EV investment and Life Orb, Cloyster had positive matchups against Azelf, Skarmory, Metagross, Machamp, Jirachi, the list goes on. It could almost always get spikes up, but the downside was that it would be pretty dead weight later on. But hey, good thing it has explosion, right? With that, Cloyster could even blow up on Swampert or other threatening leads if needed. Usually though, it had the specific patterns of Surf, Spikes, and Ice Shard that would handle most opposing leads. Ice Shard specifically was very important because it allowed Cloyster to out-prioritize to nab KOs when necessary against the opposing Pokemon after it broke its Focus Sash. Unfortunately though, it did have a few matchups that it straight up lost. Those being Celebi, Empoleon, Rose Raid, and the ever-annoying Starmie. Those matchups plus the aforementioned weaknesses meant Cloyster was actually underused, but it had its place in overuse as well, so long as the team called for it. And if you're curious, an underused Cloyster still took advantage of its new ability Skill Link to cut through teams with hugely powerful Rock Blast. I would talk about this right now, except... We can talk about it now in Gen 5 instead. Well first let's talk about the negative, because there's a whole lot of positive. Explosion is bad in Gen 5 because it no longer has defense, and fighting types are so rampant and they love prying Cloyster open and eating it for breakfast. Now the good, holy sh Shell Smash, baby! A good amount of Pokemon got this move, but only one could use it well outside of anything not Baton Pass focused, and goddamn did Cloyster use it well. Once the enemy team was opened up with other offensive Pokemon, Cloyster could come in on some poor bulky ground type, resist through its attacks, and boost to high heaven. Even with a lower defense investment, Cloyster's defense was just so high on its own that it didn't matter a huge deal, and its normally just decent offenses were now terrifying, especially because skill link meant Cloyster had an effectively 125 base power 100% accuracy ice stab and icicle spear. Rock Blast's low accuracy hurt, but it was also absurdly powerful. Once Cloyster had come out of its shell, there weren't many things that could stop it thanks to its great stab coverage. And if it was holding King's Rock, it had a 41% chance to flinch after either of its multi-hit moves. Other item choices like Never Melt Ice or White Herb boosted Cloysters in other areas, but nothing really felt as good as seeing Rotom Wash get flinched. Cloyster performed amazing in the rain, where its water type stabs ripped through potential checks like Conquest there and steel types. Now those steel types could give it problems, as Cloyster's two skill link moves both got resisted by steel. This is where Cloyster's last move slot came into play. Ice Shard was necessary to handle Breloom or Scarf Latios, and it let Cloyster check opposing Dragon types and Landorus without boost. But then Cloyster lost hardcore to steel types, who could otherwise be handled with Razor Shell or Hydro Pump, bar Ferrothorn, who just really screwed over Cloyster. However, bulky water types were a good answer no matter what, able to tank through Rock Blast most of the time. Rotom Wash could Thunderbolt Cloyster into Oblivion, and the two jellies Jellicent and Tentacruel could try to burn Cloyster with Scald or go for straight up status with will o -Wisp or Toxic. Finally, Slowbro and Keldeo could tank through the Endless Barrage and go for the special defense stat. Special mention should be given to Quagsire who was fully unaware of the smash boost. Now that's a lot of answers to Cloyster, but the ease with which Cloyster set up and its terrifying power meant it was still an amazing threat and overuse. The once defensive powerhouse now performing admirably on the offense end of the spectrum. In fact, Cloyster was so powerful he could even perform as a sweeper 
Uber and Uber sometimes. Now that's a reason to smile. Now stat boosters were typically not top cut fair in VGC 2012, falling prey to a fast paced metagame. However, because of Focus Sash and the absolutely absurd power of smashing his shell, Cloyster had the potential to be one of the only viable boosters in VGC, especially with team support like Wide Guard, Rage Powder, and Fake Out, helping it get its sash off 100% of the time. This Cloyster played near identical to its singles counterpart and wasn't seen that much. However, another Cloyster set proved quite effective. Now when you look at Cloyster, you're probably not thinking Choice Scarf. But turns out Skill Link is just an amazing ability on its own, even without Shell Smash. A guaranteed 5 hit Icicle Spear kills Zapdos, Latios, Thunderous, Tornadus, the list is pretty long. As a multi-hit move, it pops items in the middle, meaning not even Yatch Berry or Focus Sash can save the opponent, and even Substitutes fall before the might of Icicle Spear. Now this set is understandably even weaker against priority like Bullet Punch or Mach Punch, but the unexpected ability to eliminate a good amount of common threats carried the set all the way to a championship on the team of Abram Burroughs, who managed to win 2012 Juniors with a Scarf Cloyster as the highlight of his team, specifically one that has Hidden Power Grass over Explosion. Fun fact, this Cloyster was later distributed at Winter Regionals, but its IVs weren't locked, so it didn't have the right HP always. Wait, oops, Cloyster also got third at Nationals in the Senior Division the next year, and then another third at Worlds, both on the team of Cameron Swan, aka Drizzle Boy. So even though it wasn't one of the top threats seen in VGC 2012, smart players made it work quite well. Finally, Cloyster in Gen 6, honestly, not much change for Cloyster. It just fell behind. Cloyster could still be an offensive threat, but why go for Cloyster when there are so many Mega Pokemon running around with the same amount of power? Well, I guess you could have Cloyster and a Mega Pokemon on the same team, but that's besides the point. What's more, those same Megas were Cloyster's biggest threat, with Pokemon like Mega Scizor, Mega Lopunny, and Mega Metagross all destroying it because their attack stats were just very, very high. And also, they had priority. Thanks to all that, it fell to Underuse, where it operated fine as a Shell Smash Sweeper. But that tricky shell still had a place in Ubers, operating as a Swiss Army Knife Hazard setter and remover and also dragon killer. Oh Cloyster, what secrets you hide inside your shell? And that's it, so how good was Cloyster actually? You know what? Pretty damn good. We've seen this thing go through a lot of iterations, but it's funny that it started and ended as a cleaner, despite its most notable stat being defense. Cloyster is just a Pokemon that has been given many gifts through the generations, from clamp to spikes to skill link to shell smash. It's one of the only ice types to ever be hugely prominent as a defensive mon, and also one of the strongest offensive ice types gen 5 and onward, even with worse attack and speed than many others. So the verdict? Yeah, you can keep grinning, Cloyster. Good job. Thanks for watching everyone, and a big thank you to our patrons for selecting this Pokemon and for continued support of our videos. But also, thank you to all of you as well, as I wouldn't be able to make any of these videos without your help. And if you liked the video and want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False White Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. Although for next week's general pick, we already have you covered, so I guess comment on the Pokemon you want to see after that. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. Happy 2018, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day, everyone.